Welcome to this video tutorial on an enigmatic type of special chromosome that is the supernumerary B chromosome. Now basically the chromosome complement that is carried by all the members of a species that means the essential chromosomes of a species they are commonly referred to as the e a chromosomes but in some species certain special type of chromosomes they have been observed they are extra chromosomes that is they are not present in all the individuals and they are non essential so such type of chromosomes they have been grouped under the category of B chromosomes. Other names used for B chromosomes include the accessory chromosomes or the supernumerary chromosomes, the additional chromosome or the extra or dispensable elements. Now first of all these B chromosomes they were described in an plant bug insect that is Metapodius by Wilson in 1907. By now, these B chromosomes, they have been identified in many taxa. It is supposed that they may be present in nearly 15% of all the eukaryotic species and this data is increasing every day as the sequencing and other efforts they are in progress they are present throughout the living world ranging from the fungi to various animals and plant species and as per the database or in the this B chrome database until July uh, sorry until January 2019 there were approximately 2087 plants in which B chromosomes have been observed 744 animals and 14 fungi species have been reported to con to contain to have this B chromosome elements. Now what are the basic characteristics of this B chromosomes? Basic point is they are present in a subset of the population that means they are not present in all individuals in the population. Second thing is if they are not present in all individuals that refers that they are dispensable elements. The third characteristic feature is that they do not recombine with the A chromosome and hence no recombination between the A and the B type of chromosomes. In some cases they are known to be nuclear parasites nuclear parasites because their number it increases it increases in the nucleus to an alarming rate at an alarming rate and at the cost of this a chromosome so the selfishness it leads to the host parasite relationship and we know that when we say it's a host parasite relationship it means that the host will try to get rid of this parasite another characteristic feature of B chromosome is that generally they consist of heterochromatin that is non-coding uh, sorry the chromatin type 
that is compactly organized that is not transcribed now these b chromosomes they do not follow the mendelian inheritance pattern they have their own mechanism of being carrying carried over from one generation to the next according to the classical concept of b chromosome that was basically based on cytogenetics and genetics these b chromosomes they were considered to be selfish chromosomes and they were abundant and had dna repeats of different types they were composed of they were made up of repeated dna sequences and transposomes and it was supposed that they do not have any function in particular but with the advent of omics by saying the word omics o m i c s i mean yeah it is meant rather that a pattern of study in which this characterization across the species across the living world is a proteomic study of protein then the genomics study of the genome similarly biomics that means when different b chromosomes present throughout the living world they were studied what emerged was the modern view of this b chromosome and it was very different from the classical concept now according to this modern view these b chromosomes they have many genes and many of those genes they have got biological functions biological functions related to cell cycle or the chromosome structure and they may even regulate the transmission and maintenance of a chromosomes inside the cell it was observed that these b chromosomes they favor genomic rearrangements and thus they influence the nuclear environment which in turn affects the function and other properties of the regular a chromosomes because they are present within the nucleus itself along with the a chromosomes now according to this modern concept modern view these b chromosomes they possess different type of repetitive elements the same repetitive elements they may be present in the a chromosome part of the organism these includes various tandemly arranged repetitive elements various lines that is long interspersed nuclear elements or the short interspersed nuclear elements various interstitial telomeric sequences are present in the b chromosomes now clusters of ribosomal dna they are of common occurrence along with various histone genes now these b sequences along with various repetitive elements they also contain many gene fragments and at times certain complete genes also now these gene fragments and these uh, complete genes they results from the duplication of the gene present in the a chromosome that means this part of the b chromosome is derived from the a chromosome 
due to replication of these segments and these segments they are carried over from the a chromosome to the b chromosome by means of transposable elements particularly these b chromosomes they are rich in retrotransposomes now various pseudo gene like sequences they have also been observed and their results because of rearrangement of the sequences the duplication of sequences from a chromosomes now these are the points that indicate that the origin of these b chromosomes is from a chromosomes itself now the b chromosome it also has certain b essential genes these genes uh, sorry these chromosomes as we have already said they do not follow the mendelian pattern and so they have their own pattern of transmission to the next generation so these b essential genes help in the process apart from that there are various insertions of organellular dna particularly in the b chromosomes of various plants as was observed in the rye b chromosome so this b chromosomes they originate they are supposed to have be, uh, have the origin from the a chromosome itself now these are the multi chromosomal dnas different parts that means from different a chromosomes different segments they may be obtained these different segments they may be the transposomes they may be the duplication of some of the part of this a chromosome fragment or they may be a certain part of a chromosome that rearrange themselves and all such fragments partial dna uh, genomic dnas from different a chromosomes they accumulate leading to multi chromosomal dna now from this multi chromosomal dna there is rearrangement of various blocks and this forms the b precursor dna so this part of multi chromosomal dna it separates it gets isolated and now it is the b precursor dna now in this b precursor dna are present the essential genes that will code for the histones the dnas and the packaging proteins so that it will become a proper chromosome and this b precursor dna have various evolutionary hotspots evolutionary hotspot means they have got various dna segments in which which are prone to mutations hence the hotspots and those sequences they are also incorporated yeah they are also the part of this b precursor dna and now this b precursor dna it forms the chromatin with the help of these essential genes resulting in the formation of the b chromatin this leads to the formation of proto b this proto b it does not follow the mendelian inheritance pattern it escapes its elimination by having its own mechanism of being inherited that is by means of meiotic drive and these escaped proto b's they accumulate 
more and more of DNA because now they are not under the influence of the general cell cycle mechanism. So they will accumulate more and more DNA and they exist in the form of B chromosomes. Now the mechanism of transmission of B chromosomes is the drive mechanism. This drive mechanism is characterized by two points. First is that the rate of transmission of these chromosomes is very high, higher than 0.5. And the second thing is that the Mendel's law of inheritance is not followed. And such type of mechanism of transmission in which the rate is high and which does not follow the Mendelian laws of inheritance are referred to as the drive mechanism. So, with the help of this drive mechanism, the B chromosomes, they successfully accumulate in the population. And because the transmission frequency is high, so they are not eliminated from the population. Although they do not have most of the essential genes for their transmission. Now this drive, it leads to increased number of bees in the next generation. And what will be the maximum number of bees? That depends on the balance between these B chromosomes which is maintained by the A chromosomes. Like in maize, it may harbor, the cells may harbor up to 34 B chromosomes and this is the most widely studied set of B chromosomes in plant kingdom. While the rye, it has got just 6 B chromosomes. Now, it is not essential that all the B chromosomes, they are inherited to the next generation. That is, the presence of this drive mechanism is not the characteristic feature of all the B chromosomes. The B chromosomes, they may or may not have possessed this drive mechanism. And when this drive mechanism is present, it may be in any phase of the life cycle, the premeotic or meiotic or the postmeotic. Now, the classical concept said that these B chromosomes, they were either parasitic or selfish, just maintaining themselves. And basically they were supposed to be junk products of A and were genetically inert because they were heterochromatic. Na? But now it is well understood that these B chromosomes, they have many functional genes which are transcriptionally active and the, they may even regulate the expression pattern of various genes that are present on the a chromosomes. So the biomics that is the combined characterization, the combined study of the various functions of B chromosomes throughout the living world, it has revealed numerous functions of bees of various species, both plants and animals. And these includes the regulation of signaling, the cell communication or regulation of localization or the transport, various developmental processes, how the cells they adhere to each other, biological regulations of various processes, physiological processes or cell metabolic processes, the cellular metabolisms, 
various regulation of multicellular organisms means every aspect of life has got some impact of these b chromosomes in some of the other species so all these functions that have that are being shown in the slide they belong to different class diff diverse species plants as well as animals and the fungi so they are not inert they have got so many functions so we said that a balance is maintained as to what will be the number of b chromosomes in a particular species or in a particular cell type and that balance is maintained by the a chromosomes so how that is possible basically the b chromosomes they are produced they are formed within the cell and multiple forms of these b chromosomes they are present but the evolutionary fate is regulated by the genes present on a chromosomes now mutations they take place they may occur on these various genes present in the a chromosomes and these mutations may lead to suppression of the parasitic b chromosomes and this parasitic b drive genes those genes which induces the transmission of b chromosomes from one generation to another their functioning is hindered by these mutated genes of a chromosomes and these different variants they switch off the parasitic genes or neutralize the possible harmful effect of the various b chromosomes present in the cell now if that was the simple case that would have led to the elimination of b chromosome from the living world but it is not so so what happens is that, that on the b chromosome we know the parasitic b genes are there along with the useful genes so this some neutralization effect may also take place neutralization effect means one thing may be that they do not possess the drive ability and this results in a random walk towards the loss that means they may be lost if they are not transmitted from one generation to another they will be lost so if this parasitic gene b gene the gene that controls the drive mechanism it remains switched off it these b genes they will be extinct another possibility is that some mutation takes place in this parasitic b gene and because of the mutation in the parasitic b gene these a gene variants they are unable to switch off the drive mechanism of this b chromosome so they will persist with the useful genes as they were in this case mutation is only in the parasitic b gene the other possibility the third possibility is there is mutation in both the genes of b chromosome the parasitic b genes along with various useful genes if that is the case they drive it will persist and new phenotypes will be produced and this provides the seed for evolution so in this way the b chromosomes 
they may either get extinct they may either be maintained within the population or they may lead to evolution of the population so to summarize what we have just learned the presence of these genes they do not affect the phenotype generally now they do not pair with the a chromosomes and they do not obey the mendelian laws these bees they survive themselves during the cell cycle by drive mechanism and the molecular mechanism of what happens during this drive is not well understood these b genes they are highly enriched in repetitive and selfish dnas they have got a multi chromosomal origin and they possess thousands of fragmented genetic sequences along with a few complete genes and they these completed genes they are basically responsible for the evolution of the b genes and for the various phenotypes that are observed because of these presence of b chromosomes in the organism so this special type of chromosomes the supernumerary b chromosomes indeed need a lot of research and some of it its concept has been understood and a lot remains they are an enigmatic a puzzling entity of cytogenetics